Yet another slow start for the Arizona Coyotes has proven to kill them once again as Arizona takes a 6-2 to loss to the Ottawa Senators. We're going to talk about that game. Things we might have liked, but mainly just we're just going to be depressed all day on today's episode of Locked On Coyotes. Your Locked On Coyotes, your daily podcast on the Arizona Coyotes, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome to the show, everybody. I'm Robin Leonio. That's Carl Pavlock. Right beside me on today's episode of Locked On Coyotes. I want to thank everyone for making this show your first listen every day. We are free and available on all platforms, including on YouTube. We've got a great show for you guys on today's episode. We're talking about the Arizona Coyotes' loss to the Ottawa Senators. 6-2, to two, the final score on Saturday afternoon. We're going to talk about that game. Uh, break it down, see what happened in that game, because it wasn't a good game, Carl. Arizona just, again, I think this is like what their, their uh, what, f- uh, fifth straight game in which they have a slow start? Yes, um, they have had a slow start every game this season. Uh, I think this is their fourth game where they've given up six goals total. Um, this one, I think, is more unfortunate than any other because they had both a slow start and a bad finish. Like this is probably the worst Coyotes game of the year so far. Yeah. I mean, they looked a little bit better in the second period, but yeah, we're again, we're talking about what a, you know, 10, 15 to 20 minute stretch versus a 60 minute game. Makes a big difference. Yeah. They they won the second period. They played well enough for like twenty minutes of a forty of a sixty minute game. So, like, just not good enough on any level. Like, this was bad. Yeah, 100% against a not great team. Yeah, it. I mean, like, this is a Senators team that you know that is trying to kind of emerge from their rebuild. I mean, they picked up um, what Drew. They picked up uh, to bring it to bring it like, you know, it's a team that wants to do to be good. Um, it's just obviously they're not. Uh, no. And and I'm not saying, you know, the Coyotes should have been a much closer game, uh, co- closer in this game because, well, the Coyotes are a terrible team as well. But yeah. you still want to see competition. And when you only see it for a third of a game. It really makes me question the competitiveness of this team. Yeah. We have seen the Coyotes like fight back from a deficit where they're like down by multiple goals. You know, they're not going to come back and they still mount somewhat of a comeback. They'll score goals. They'll avoid a shutout. They'll do all of that. The problem with this game was like going into the third period, they were competitive And then they gave up two extremely soft goals and didn't seem to be fighting for anything for that last period. And, you know, that's a, that's an issue. That is something where I, I want them to be better. Like I know that they're going to lose a lot of games, but like that is just dumb mistakes that they should not be doing. And that could carry over into the next season. Yeah, very well could. And I will say one thing that I kind of like to did like to see is despite all that, some of the young kids were the competitive ones. Sure. Right. I mean, l- let me go ahead and just put, put put it straight out there. You know, Dylan Gunther got a goal out there, right? Yeah. And his first looked, goal. Yeah, his first goal of his NHL career. It's like, OK, we love to see that. You know, Matias Michelli had a presence on the ice. But one of the Coyotes best players, Matias Michelli. Uh, oh, absolutely. And had an assist on the Gunther goal, um, which was great to see. 
Uh, I feel like he does a lot and is not rewarded with it. Like, because he's not really like showing up on the points, but he's showing up on the ice. He's trying. Oh, absolutely. You love to I, see I love that. to see that. You love to see that he's trying. And I think the good thing is, you know, I think because it was showing he's trying, he's show, he's showing that he's doing his best to prove the fact that he belongs in the NHL. Yeah. And honestly, like th- there was those bright spots, mostly in the second period. And I think we're also seeing like the weaknesses, like the coyotes have way too many turnovers. Mm-hmm. Uh, the defense is not good. Uh, speaking of guys who prove that there should be in the NHL, uh, I think Dyson Mayo is maybe proving they should be sent back to Tucson because it is not a great start for him. No, it's not. You know, defense has been a has been a major problem for so far this season. I mean, look, let's look at it. This um, six goals. Uh, what legit like? There's only one game in which, you know, the Coyotes held a team to less than six goals. Yeah, yeah. The game they won, so that's saying something, but uh, still, it's a problem. And I think for the first time, like, the Melka was an issue, too, because those two goals in the third period, the first two goals, they they were pretty soft. Like, they should have done that. Everyone should have been like playing hard, especially with that second one where the Coyotes just didn't play the whistle. But the Mucka, especially the guy who's there, should have done more. Oh, 100 percent. And, you know, I was thinking at first, you know, going through this Eastern Canada road trip and stuff like that. You know, I saw the way they Mucka played against uh, against Toronto. I'm like, OK, maybe he's starting to get his groove. And then I saw and then. You know, obviously, we saw how Connor Ingram played against Montreal, and we're just like, okay, you know, goaltending is still a little shaky. And then Vimoka has this performance; it's another another six goal, you know, against, and just like, all right, dude, what are you doing? Yeah, yeah, it's it's not great goaltending wise. It's not great defensively because I don't want to put all of the blame on Vimoka or Ingram, like the, the team is still like having an insane amount of turnovers. Like they're just not playing tight. They're not engaged. I, I don't know what the problem is. I, I don't know either too. Cause I'm tr- you know, obviously, you know, um, so many other fans will be like, wait, Robin, Carl, I know it's cause no one wants to play there. No, let's like, I'm going to stop you right there. That's just a load of crap. There are yeah. teams, there are, there, there are players who legit want to be here. You know, I was listening to uh, a uh, uh, Bob Heathouse interview, I believe, with uh, uh, with Lawson Krause. And Krause is like, yeah, I want to be a coyote for the rest of my career. Yeah. Like, Fisher, I think, had, like, a couple of decent moments, like, more than I've seen, like, previously for him from him uh nick ritchie again like had a game where he looked engaged for part of it but like there there are serious issues with the fact that a team cannot play a full 60 minutes and you know that that to me is like the big question like why are they not able to do what they did in the second period for the rest of the game and it's not just because they're not good because you could still be good and work hard. They are not good and not working hard. Exactly. And that's the thing. Um, you know, there's a lot of different factors that can go into it. Like maybe we can get a closer look at it and kind of see, you know, maybe see the mentality, what happens when they first play at Mullet Arena next week. Right. They got a th- what three game stretch at Mullet or four, was it four? Uh, two. So uh, two? they're. I believe it's only two uh, because uh, it's going into November, but I think they do go out for like a it's short a four, road trip. It's a four game stretch uh, okay. at, at home. Went against Winnipeg on Friday, New York on Sunday, um, and then Florida on Tuesday, Dallas on Thursday. And then they go on that long um a uh, long what is that four week 
well, five week road trip. I mean, it's it's tough. It's going to be tough, but like they knew it was going to be tough going into this. There needs to be some plan in place to keep the key, the team engaged. Um, the only good thing I could say about this is at least they have that first one. At least they had that first win, so we don't have to worry about how long this losing streak is going to go because, well, at least they got one. We're going to yeah. get to into some of the stats, though, maybe some other t- topics to get to on this episode of Lockdown and Coyotes. We're going to get to that in just a moment, but first turning to Carl for a quick word. So I just want to say that betonline.net is your number one source for all your betting needs for football and the start of basketball season. You can find all the latest player developments, team matchups, news, podcasts, and in-depth analysis on every game. And as always, Bet Online remains your continued source for all your sports wagering information with live betting and up-to-the-minute scores for every game out there. It's the fastest and easiest way to check out all your favorite games and events, including Major League Baseball, MMA, boxing, golf, and hockey. You can head over to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more. Bet online where the game starts. So let's continue this episode of Locked On Coyotes. Let's look at let's take a, let's try to look at some of the stats because obviously it wasn't a good game. Um, nope. Coyotes only got uh, two goals, um, and as mentioned earlier, one of them came from uh, from Dylan Gunther and. Trying to find out what it is as Dylan Gunther from Michelli and uh, Valimaki. Like this sound just, like his first point as a coyote, which is great. And it just tells you something too. Another thing, look at that. Um, the three players are like, you know, players who uh, weren't on really the team. I mean, Michelli was a little bit last year, but like. Still, I would still consider more like that, you know, rookie, um, new newbie status, right? Three sure. newbies to the team. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and then the other one was the staple, Clinton Keller, Travis Boyd. Uh, the two players who you'd kind of expect to score, uh, especially with uh, Nick Schmaltz being out. Like, mm-hmm. The only other players I could think who would really contribute offense to this team, you know, recently, uh, I would say would be Shane Gossespierre and Nick Ritchie. And Ritchie did like his part. Uh, I felt Gossespierre was okay. Like, I think he was maybe one of the better defensemen to play, but just all around the, the defense was not great this game. No, it wasn't. Um, and and again, you look at you you know, just try to see the total shots. I mean, it was thirty two for the Senators, right? Thirty two yeah. shots. Um, and six come like you know, six come by. I'm trying trying to think, trying to find more of the stats and see how much of those were actual scoring chances. But that's still. I mean, the same. I think. Probably one of the bigger things to look at is the face-off numbers. Uh, I'm on NHL.com, list 63% wins for the Senators, 38 for the Coyotes. Uh, those numbers don't more match up, but you know, still, like that is heavily slanted for the Senators. Like they did so much. Like the Coyotes were able to get one power play goal, but their power play was not very effective this game. Like they were one for five and didn't look good on most of those power plays. Absolutely, and and that's the thing too. Like and that ga- and that came from when what we were talking about earlier this week, where the Coyotes' power play was one of the best. Right? Yeah, it was. They were looking really good, um, but then again, it doesn't last long. No, the the power play like I feel is really good when it's supplementing the regular offense. But when you're relying on the power play, which is what the coyotes have been doing for most of the season, like that, that's just not going to help. Um, and I think a bigger issue is there was another low start. It was another game where they gave up multiple goals in the first 
seven and a half minutes. Like, why? Why do that? Like, that just shows you're not ready to play. It does show you're not ready to play. And again, it does kind of question what things are going to look like moving forward in the next week. Um, they have, you know, one more away game uh, before coming home. And I meant, like, as, as I mentioned, it is a, a uh, four game homestand before that month long road trip. You know, so next Tuesday, they're going to be in Columbus facing the Blue Jackets before, you know, coming back home to face the Jets. Um, how they play against Columbus will be an interesting story, but it's really how they how they deal with it at home, right? And let's take a look. To, let's take a look at ahead. You know, what would be some of your expectations, some of your hopes that they do as they get ready for this next week? Honestly, like I feel like Bear needs to bag skate this team. Like they are not like showing up for a full 60 minutes. I don't know if that's a problem with conditioning. I don't know if that's a problem with being motivated, but like that third period was probably one of the most demoralizing things we've seen this season because the Coyotes have been like, you know, they've gone down early and the game looked completely lost. But this was one where the Coyotes were actually like within reach of like pulling out a win and they couldn't show up for the third period of a game like that's just not acceptable um yeah i mean because they were only down what three to two after after that and that's right? nothing absolutely nothing and you know i i just i i think that needs to be addressed that is not something that should be in the foundation of this team moving forward um also you know, since we are seeing games without Jacob Chikrin, I think they need to like definitely get defensive prospects back from Jacob Chikrin because the blue line is just not covering it and you don't see any kind of relief coming from the pipeline. Like, no, it's not. And that also just makes us question too what they did during this last draft. And don't get me wrong, you know, there were some people, some defensemen that they did, but those that, you know, they didn't pick up defensemen until later, much later in the draft. And you're just like, okay, what are you doing here? And I'm not saying yeah. it's like, hey, look, you know, don't pick up Logan Cooley, don't pick up Connor Geeky, because those guys, I mean, maybe with the exception, maybe Connor Geeky, you could have found another def better defenseman. But yeah. like, what I'm saying, what I'm saying is, you sh you know, they should have focused on that, right? They should have, fo they should have known that going in. The fact that they were, tr that they're trying to move Jacob Chikrin, and they don't pick up defensive prospects. Yeah, I could definitely see like Geeky being a player where we look back and being like, should have got a defenseman, um, in with that pick because that was a, a fairly high pick. You could have got like a really good prospect, uh, like Maverick. Uh, I think we've talked about like he could be like a good third pairing guy, but he's got a pretty significant ceiling for him. Like he's not going to be your number one guy. Yeah. Um, and like there was plenty of players who they could have just like been like, hey, this guy is a you know. 10% chance of being your top one defenseman and 50% chance of being not in the league at all, but we're going to take that gamble with the second round pick and they didn't do that. Or they use those picks to move up in the draft to get Kiki. Like, I don't know. Like the looking at the defensive core that the Coyotes have now and what they have in the future like the draft makes a little bit less sense. It does, but you know, obviously we'll take a look and see what happens. You know, there's still a lot to discuss about the you know, surrounding Jacob Chikrin, surrounding what the defensive prospects look like. But right now, it just does not look good. Yeah, yeah. I I, I do honestly think we may see Dennis Mayo um, put on waivers because I think he would need to clear waivers to go to the Tucson Roadrunners. Makes sense. Makes sense. Anyways, though, we're going to wrap things up on this episode of Lockdown Coyotes in just a sec. But first, I do want to, once again, thanks, thank everyone for making Lockdown Coyotes your first listen today. Afterwards, after listening to this show, be sure to make your second listen, 
Game to game NHL, every moment, every top performance, every result, locked on game to game covers every game from across the National Hockey League. Local analysis that only locked on can deliver. Follow game to game on locked on NHL, available on the Odyssey app, on YouTube, and wherever you get your podcast. All right, so now I want to go ahead and close things off on this episode by discussing something that uh, showed up earlier this week or, or over the weekend, uh, Carl, that uh, gives a little bit of a heavy heart to me because it doesn't sound it, like it just didn't sit well with me. Um, uh, for those of you who listen to just in general, our Locked On Podcast Network um, may or may not have heard that, you know, one of our colleagues um, of a different show, and I won't, I won't name specifically, said something in regards to uh, fan-driven content. And uh, I just want to address this and say straight up that we at Locked On Coyotes do not agree with the opinions that he said on that podcast. And I don't think it even aligns with the viewpoints of the Locked On Podcast Network in general. But again, it does not align with ours at all. Um, as you know, someone who I would say is kind of the hybrid between the fan and the professional, like I, you know, like. I understand what these guys said. I was I was just there. And I'm pretty sure, Carl, you know, like I have been building myself up from the ground on trying to build Coyotes content, trying to be, you know, a a resource for a lot of Coyotes fans out there. Um, and because, you know, that's what young aspiring journalists do, right? We go out and we like build ourselves up. We go, we start from ground zero and we build ourselves up. That's the only way to do it. And everyone starts as a fan. Everyone kind of has those kind of things. So if you're going to go ahead and, 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 and tr- you know, bash on, on uh, fan-driven content, um, I'm, I'm sorry. I just do not agree with that. Uh, yeah, I, I absolutely agree. Um, in my time writing about the Coyotes for more than a decade, uh, I have never seen myself professional because this has never been my primary source of income. Uh, I have been getting paid for hockey content uh, the past couple of years, um, but a majority of my time I was spent unpaid, uh, what would be considered fan content. Uh, Do I look back at my own content and say, that was good work? Uh, No, because I hate myself. And I always look back at everything I do critically. Um, But I know plenty of people who are in my position who published phenomenal work um, in that same level, not being paid. Uh, The thing that really stuck out to me in those comments was the talk of credentials, which is just incredibly unfair, I would say. Um, As a person who has covered the Coyotes, I know that teams are allowed to be very, you know, discriminating in their uh, choice of who they allow to have credentials. And I have seen Five for Howling be, you know, loved and, like, given lots of, like, time and access. I've seen the site be given not a lot of access and not because of the, like, level of professionalism of the site – um, it was more the content that was being written and that how the team responded to that content. And for a lower level, you're allowed to just kind of be like, we don't want you there because you said X thing and you mm-hmm. don't have any recourse against that. And yep. Absolutely. And, and to be fair, I've also seen people at my level just say the dumbest thing possible and have credentials stripped away like there are people who should not be ha- like have credentials, uh, but to be fair, I've also seen professional people do the dumbest thing possible and be like, yeah. "All right, you're gone." Yeah, and I'll just go back and kind of like reiterate, you know, the the, the entire thing is, you know, I myself am a credentialed member of media, right? Um, yeah. I have been credentialed to Coyotes games. I have been. I have been credentialed to Roadrunners games for the last six years. Um, and never will I look down on, you know, a, you know, like a fan podcast or a blog 
or anything of that and be like, hey, you know, you guys are less than like, I don't think what you're publishing is any good. I don't think people should listen to you. I never say anything like that because that's just first of all, that's just like degrading. And two, like, like I said, Carl, I have been there before. I have been there at the bottom of the totem pole. So like, why, you know, put everyone else down the fact that I've built myself up to where I am. And I'm not the top yet. Like I look up at the insiders that put those, the, you know, the top members of the coyotes media pool. And I'm like, okay, I still look up to you guys, but they don't look down at me. Yeah. They treat me like a colleague. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I do want to say, like, the the person who said that was representing a different sport. I feel like hockey, especially, because we saw the growth of fan content with fan analysis, and those people who were, like, analyzing the game, like, the creators of what we, like, then called fancy stats, and now just call stats, uh, they were not being paid to do this they were not credentialed uh they were looking at the game from the level that they could and creating like knowledge about that game that we have never seen before so i think that is so key when like evaluating anyone like just the person you're talking to in any sport in anything really could have a wealth of knowledge that even the most respected reporter does not have. And you should take them seriously uh, up until the point where they do something or say something that's just absolutely insane. But you need to be open that like anyone can give you content that is meaningful and knowledgeable because you know it's not a straight progression for anyone. Like you see people go from nothing to the highest level. Like, I think we saw that on a player level from Vimelka, the second, like, European league to NHL goaltender. Like, it can happen at any level, in any field. Yeah, and it, 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 a lot of it happens, you know, making sure you put in, you know, you know, you know, put in that work. And, you know, a lot of these young journalists who are fans and want, and um, you know, and trying to find, trying to break their way in, you know, they, they should be treated like colleagues and, you know, and again, I'll say it and, and I'll say this Carl. There are a lot of other podcasts here with like, like, like I want to say there's a number of coyotes podcasts out here. Right. Yeah. And, uh, they, yeah, like, like I treat them all with respect. Like, I think I, like I follow them all. I do whatever I can. I'm like, you, you guys are awesome. You guys are awesome. What you do. Also, we cover the worst team in the league, so like maybe there's a level of camaraderie with us, but that's maybe maybe that's a whole different story. But like, yeah, we still treat each other with respect nonetheless. Yeah, yeah. I I just always like anytime I see someone who is taking the effort to cover a team, like you either have to be paid well enough, which is very rare, or have a passion to it that you could only get from a fan. And, and I truly believe that like um, when, when talking to people, like, especially on the SB nation side, which is where I come from, like nobody is doing it for the money because the money is crap. You are doing it for the love of the team or you're doing it to advance your career. And either of those people I feel like should be treated with a level of respect and, like that's true for hockey. I feel like that should be true for all sports. Absolutely. So just want to reiterate from uh, both of our perspectives that, that, that the comment made on that, uh, uh, other, that sister network show, um, doesn't reflect our views, doesn't reflect the views of the network. Once again, um, we're, you know, we, you know, we're, we're very supportive of, uh, of everybody, but on that note, any final thoughts you want to share about the Coyotes game or about, you know, anything else before we close things off? Uh, no, I don't, I don't have any final thoughts. The, today has been rough. It's been a, it's been a rough game. It was, it was a, like, I, I truly believe that this was the worst that we've seen so far, even though the score doesn't reflect that. 
the play reflected that. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, that's going to be it for today's episode of the Locked On Caillou's podcast. If you like what you heard, don't forget to leave a review. To like, to comment, to subscribe if you have yet to already. We're available everywhere you get your podcast, including on YouTube. Don't forget to interact with us on the social media on Facebook, facebook.com slash locked on coyotes, on Instagram at locked on coyotes, and on Twitter at L O underscore coyotes. I am personally at Robin underscore Leonio. Carl Pavlock is at Carl Pavlock F F H. Interact with us, ask a question you might have, we might answer right back or in a future episode of the Locked On Coyotes podcast. Thanks again, everyone, for listening to today's episode. Hope you're staying safe out there. Hope you're staying healthy. And don't forget to howl on.